every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. Open your Bibles tonight with me to Philippians 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation. He took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He being found in fashion as a man, humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, wherefore God also highly exalted him and, gave, and had given him, the King James says, a name. It isn't, it's his name. God gave him his name, which is above every name, Amen. that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things or names in heaven, names in earth, and names under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's core. Amen? Amen. Now, there are seven core values for faith people, and I'm going to give you all seven of them, and you can write them down. Of course, you, can, you know, later you get the CDs and and the DVDs and so forth. Number one, we put the Word of God first place for final authority. Number two, we live by faith. Number three, we walk in love. Number four, we are led by the Holy Spirit. Number five, we pray about everything. Number six, we honor God. And number seven, we protect the anointing. Remember now, this is a book of covenants. All of them in blood. The very first that we have any record of is when God instructed Abram to set up animals split down the spine and allow the halves to fall on either side. Then God came and walked in that blood. I'm totally convinced in the spirit, Abram saw his footsteps in that blood. And the ancient blood covenants in that walk was a figure eight, the sign of infinity. In other words, this is a covenant forever. Then the, then the second half of that became the blood of Abram who became Abraham through circumcision. Now notice this. <clears throat> that is the first record of a covenant name change. <clears throat> the H in the middle of that name. Doc, listen. Yud, hey, bav, hey, Hashem. The name. So God put his name right in the middle of Abram's name and established the most magnificent covenant known to man. And that then laid the pattern that brought about the very first words a human ear ever heard 
was the blessing of the Lord. He blessed everything because he's good. And he blessed them. That's number one. So at that time, God began his plan to get the blessing back. So he blessed Abram, changed his name, moved into the middle of him, and he became the covenant friend of God. Amen. Amen. And then after that, now listen, people have, Christian people have far, far, far too little knowledge about what this is all about and, and why God insisted on certain things. <clears throat> so God called on his covenant partner to sacrifice his only son. He said, I'll do it. So he took the wood for the sacrifice, came up to the mountain as he was instructed, and told the, the people, he said, the boy and I'll be back. The boy and I'll be back. Faith. We'll be back. Went up on top of that mountain, and Isaac said, Father, where's the sacrifice? And so he had everything there, and he just had his son get up there on that, that sacrificial altar. Read it in the book of Hebrews, and you'll understand it. It said he saw him raised up in a figure. He believed it. And he raised the knife. Why? Why? Why did God do that? Because our Heavenly Father knew the day was coming when His only Son would be hung on a cross. And His Son would say, if there is any way, let this cup fr pass from me. And God would have to say, no, I can't. I can't. My covenant partner was willing to do it. Now I have to do it. I'm covenanted to a man and I have to get the blessing of Abraham back into this earth. And you're the sacrifice and you will be burned. He went to hell so you and I don't have to go. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Now, we put the Word of God first place and final authority. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 4. And read the whole fourth chapter because there's... <laughs> There's 19 before the 20th. <clears throat> Look at the 18th verse. The path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. Or in other words, it just gets brighter and brighter and brighter. The way of the wicked is a darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying. What does that mean? Put what I say first. If it's in the book, it's in blood. So you inclined to hear that. Well, I'm inclined to hear this pain. Well, we don't deny the pain. We deny its right to exist in our body. Amen. Attend to my words. In other words, put that first. You might see me on the street someday. Brother Copeland, 
Is this really you? Yeah, that's me. Good. I'm your partner. Glory to God. That's great. Come on. I'll buy you lunch. Let's go in. I want to talk to you. Partner, I sure would like to, but I can't. Why? I have a very important matter that I must attend to. Now, it's attend in California. It's attend in New York. In Texas, it's tend. <laughs> I got to tend to it. <laughs> I got to go tend to this, even though I love you. It's first place. It isn't because I don't have it. Any other time, yeah. But I have something pressing that I must attend to first. So this word, Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. This is life. This is not something over lunch. <laughs> this is life. So now, let's see what it says here about his words. Attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith, God's faith is in his word. Words are containers. Not primarily just for communication. God used words to create everything. He created it, 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, he created it out of something that does not appear. Well, he created it out of faith but you can't see it. Amen goes right there. <laughs> Pray God. So, they are life to those that find them. You have to research. Look in this book for words. Find words that cover your situation. Find words, promises, or facts from this covenant book because all of it is in blood. All of it is in blood. Adam. The meaning of his name is red. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. So, they are life, the cross reference says, medicine to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues or the forces of life. Put away from you a forward or disobedient mouth. Perverse lips put far from you. Let your eyes look right on and let your eyelids look straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet that all your ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove your foot from evil. How? By paying attention to the Word. This Word is a book of correction, direction, What else? Perfection, Perfection and protection. Protection. Perfection is completeness or blamelessness, integrity. That's what this book is about. So, 1 Peter chapter 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered abroad throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, and Asia, and so forth, elect, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the foreknowledge of God the Father, 
through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be burned with fire, might be found unto praise and honor the glory of, and appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love, in whom though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Now, let's go to 2 Peter. Now, you have to understand, these are letters. Peter didn't know he was writing the New Testament. <laughs> They're letters. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue or excellence, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious covenant promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust or human desires, and besides this, having all diligence add to your moral excellence and virtue to knowledge. To knowledge, temperance. Temperance, patience. Patience, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness, love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall never be, ne neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. But he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. <laughs> Exceeding great and precious promises. Yes, yeah. All of these are blood covenant words. Yes. Exceeding great and precious promises. By these, by these, we have the same faith as Peter, same faith as John. Why? Jesus is the author and developer of our faith. All right, look at Mark 11, 22. Your Bible ought to just fall open there. Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God or have the faith of God. Have faith in God. Yes. Well, what about these gas prices? Have faith in God. <laughs> well, what about, well, have faith in God. Well, what, I don't care what about. Have faith in God first. And in order to have faith in him, you better have a promise, a word, a fact upon which to base it. If you're planning on me mowing your yard, you better have something big in writing because that's my idea of nothing to do. <laughs> I don't go that <laughs> first little house that, that we had and we moved back to Fort Worth, I said, let, let me tell you what let's do. It was brand new. And my dad bought it and we rented it from him. <laughs> I said, let me tell you what let's do. I think this is a great idea. Um, let's, um, let, let, why, why can't, let, what, we could just put white gravel all over <laughs> with weed killer. 
Don't let the weeds come up there. <laughs> she didn't like that idea a bit. Well, okay. So, came home, priest all over the place, came home, and the grass is about this high. Oh, I didn't want to do that. So I got the lawnmower out. And it wasn't a very big light. It wasn't any bigger than this platform much. I mowed that. And the word came in and he said, mow the next door neighbor. <laughs> what if they look out there and see me mowing their yard? They're going to think I'm... He said, mow the next door neighbor and claim them. So I just pushed it across the driveway. No fence or anything between the houses. You know, a little project. I got over there in their yard and I enjoyed it. And I just mowed their yard just singing in the spirit, hallelujah. And put the lawnmower up, didn't think any more about it. I mean, it was just a few days. I opened the door and it was Mrs. Lemon. They live next door. And their children played with our children. <laughs> she said, um, I just wanted to tell you that, that Jesus is Lord. I want you to know. I said, yeah, lady. And she said, she said I, and she, I just want to, I'm, I'm witnessing to everybody on this block. I'm telling everybody on this block. You need to know. But I said, lady, I know, I know, I know, no. Tell, wait a minute, slow down. Tell me what you're talking about. Well, she said, you know the little Presbyterian church down here. Well, yeah, I knew that. I said, yes. Well, she said, they had a lay witness mission come in there and they preached Jesus and I got saved. And my husband got saved. And I'm, on a, I'm witnessing to the whole neighborhood. I said, that's great. I'm a preacher. <laughs> really? I said, yes. Well, she said, glory to God. <laughs> She didn't know I mowed her yard and claimed her. <laughs> Amen. Wasn't much territory, but it worked. <laughs> but you know what worked? The name. The name, because I mowed that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The name that's above it. Join Kenneth Copeland at these upcoming KCM events. August 1 through 6, bring your whole family to the Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. October 27 through 29, come to the Omaha Victory Campaign in Nebraska. And November 10 through 12, join Kenneth Copeland at the Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign in Woodbridge, Virginia. KCM events are free to attend. Go to kcm.org events for more information and we'll see you there. As a believer, you already meet all the qualifications to being an overcomer. If you're feeling beat down in any area, professionally, socially, physically, or mentally, faith is the key to stepping over into the victory side. In the audio series, Faith, How It Works, Kenneth Copeland's teachings can help you grasp God's faith formula that is found in the Word of God. Get your questions answered through this important foundational teaching. What is faith and where does it come from? Who has faith? How do you get more faith? How can faith help you live a better life? No weapon of the enemy is a match for faith released. Faith comes by hearing the word of God and speaking the word releases faith. Take the first steps toward living a God-pleasing life full of love, hope, and victory by receiving this impactful teaching into your heart today. Learn how to use the world overcoming faith God has given you. The weapons of the enemy are no match for faith when it's released. Request your free copy of Kenneth Copeland's MP3 series, Faith, How It Works, on kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01225 787 310. This free offer is good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. For more information, contact your regional office today. Hi, I'm Spencer Nordyke. 
Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have a gift for you. It's called Faith, How It Works. This audio series goes right along with the broadcast this week with Brother Copeland, teaching you how to live a life of victory through faith. And as you listen to this teaching, your faith in God will grow and be strengthened. Use this series to help you activate your faith and release it to see God's results in your life. You can receive this free audio series on MP3 or as a digital download on kcm.org. Today starts the Southwest Believers Convention. This is KCM's great hometown meeting, August 1st through 6th at the Fort Worth Convention Center in downtown Fort Worth, Texas. And this is a place where you can come and hear good news. In a world that tells you what you can't do, what you can't have, tells you it won't work, and tells you it's not available to you, but you can have the promises of God that say yes. You can have everything the blessing provides. It's important what you hear and allow to get down into your spirit. So I invite you to be part of this week's Southwest Believers Convention. This is your time to be reminded of who you are in Christ. And this is your time to be strengthened by the word and refreshed in his presence. You'll hear from Brother Copeland and an amazing lineup of guest speakers, Jerry Savelle, Jesse Duplantis, Creflo Dollar, Keith Moore, Jeremy Pearsons, and Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons. We have children's and youth services also happening this week, so bring your whole family and grow in the word and victory together. Go to kcm.org for all the information and make your plans now to join us in person or online through our website or social media channels. This is Spencer Nordyke reminding you that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us on The Believer's Voice of Victory. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want you to be victorious in life. Go to kcm.org.uk for free ministry resources and teaching tools to help you grow in faith and live in the blessing of the Lord. Stay connected with us through our website and all of our social channels to help us keep you informed and up to date on ministry outreaches, upcoming events, and specials that are available to you. You have a free resource to help you study and apply the Bible-based truths you just heard. Download the BVOV broadcast study notes today at kcm.org.uk slash notes. Collect the notes from each week and use them in a group Bible study. Use the message outline to teach from. Discuss the scriptures and key points with your family of believers. Gain understanding from all the teachings on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Get the whole week of notes today at kcm.org.uk slash notes. Welcome to KCM.org, your study center for victory. Watch the BVOV broadcasts on demand. Search by topic or speaker and study along with the detailed daily broadcast notes or download the podcast version to listen on the go. Total immersion in the Word of God at home, in the car, at the gym, or in the waiting room. Find a schedule of KCM events and watch on demand. Search by date, speaker, or keyword for hours of inspiring truth from the Bible. KCM.org meets you where you are. 